welcome. Um, yeah, that's my talk about AI and Minecraft. Um, I'm working at um, SAP Hypress Labs. My job is to take some SAP or Hypress software, e-commerce, new technology, build some prototypes out of this, uh, no products. Um, and with this project, I was uh, just playing around with Minecraft, which I do normally at home, and find some useful use case for this. In this case, um, yeah, artificial intelligence. Um, question, who never played Minecraft? Uh, still some people, yeah. The rest played of it, okay. So, when you see this picture, um, also people who don't play Minecraft before, you will realize, okay, um, this red stuff would be not so good. But what about blue stuff? And yeah, this lava here. Can you walk on it? Couldn't you walk on it? What about this brown thing here or this? Can you walk on it or not? <laughs> What's your feedback? OK. You can hear me. OK, thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, you can walk on it, couldn't walk on it. And it, imagine you have some robot or something who couldn't see something. So how to figure out what you have to do on this um, yeah, scenario here. And that's what I want to solve today. So therefore, I'm using Minecraft. Just a short intro about it. Um, it was invented by Markus Notch person. Um, I think 2011 was the first um, yeah, version uh, yeah, released. He formed uh, Moyeng AB, a Swedish company. And um, because it's one of the best-selling games, he sold it. So he wrote a tweet, I'm not interested anymore. Who wants to buy Minecraft? And Microsoft bought it uh, for 2.5 or 7 billion. First thing he, wore, he did was uh, to buy a house in Beverly Hills and rebuild it in Minecraft. So Minecraft is a sandbox construction game. It's not like you're playing in a sandbox. It's more like it's open. You, you don't have these defined um, scenarios. You can just play, be creative, have some building aspects. It's three-dimensional. And the idea is to explore the world, to gather some resources, then craft out of this, something like this, some where you have the books and your houses. And also you have to fight against zombies or uh, skeletons on, and this stuff, so it's a real game. But this is not useful for my scenario, so therefore there's a project Malmö. This is an open source project from a Microsoft Research Lab in the UK, and it's based on Minecraft and Minecraft Forge. And Minecraft Forge is um, some modding framework. And modding stands for modification. I, I, when you are all in these this words and with Minecraft and, and skeletons, so mod is modding, and you modify the Minecraft itself. So what Minecraft Forge, for example, is doing, it downloads the jar file, unpacks it, de, um, decompiles it, and puts some hooks inside of this. And this allows you to um, yeah, control the game, to get information out of the game, and so on. And with Malmö, you have a mission XML file. So you define your scenario with all the um, yeah, pieces. You get a world state, and you can send commands to one agent. And the agents are written in Python, because we are doing machine learning stuff. That's Python. Lua, this is because also Torch is in part of Malmö. Um, C++. Uh, the yeah, backend was written in C++, C Sharp because it's Microsoft. Java is also available, and the Arcad learning environment. Um, it's something like Open Gym for Atari games. I will show later on something. Okay, and there are some texts about the project, and one main part is reinforcement learning. So that's the reason. I'm here now and say something about reinforcement learning. One second. Okay. 
can hear me here. I, no, sorry. So, we have one part, it's supervised learning. This is with the cats and dogs. So you have uh, some classification of some images and you have the cats, you have the dogs, you put the panda bear on it, on, on to find to figure out and it's maybe a cat. That's supervised learning. Unsupervised learning is you have some data, just data, and you don't really know what, what kind of data there are and you try to figure out some correlations. This reminds me always on, on my statics statistics lessons in a university where you have this um, stupid correlation between storks and babies in, in Europe during the 50s, 60s. So less storks, less babies. But you try to figure out a useful uh, correlation. And then we have reinforcement learning. So with reinforcement learning, you have one agent and an environment. This could be a world, this could be something. In this case, it's the Minecraft world, some Minecraft scenario. The agent sends actions to the environment and gives back some observation, but also with the reward. And with the reward, um, the agent can learn what was this action a good move or was it a bad move. So it tries the next move, gets another reward. And when you, I will show a demo, when it dies, then you have to learn that this move wasn't on this stage, was not a good move, so next time it should do a better move. Yeah, and reinforcement learning is like trial and error learning. This is from David Silver. Um, he's um, yeah, with a deep mind, which Google bought, and they did the Alpha Zero, Alpha Go stuff. Yeah, it's like trial and error. I was thinking like, um, yeah, when a kid starts uh, with walking, you, it takes some steps, it falls down, stands up, and so on. So trial and error, this is, this is the only thing with reinforcement learning. And there's also a book from 1998, so it's not nothing new, it's nothing like uh, it was invented last year or so. It's old, the name reinforcement learning is also something older, there's some paper. But in this book is, yeah, an introduction and um, they have some examples, and I will use one of this. This is a cliff walking example. So you get a reward every time you take a move, it's minus one. You find the blue field, it's 100, and you fall into lava, will be minus 100. So this is the conditions for the following scenario. Here I go. Okay. Okay, I have this one. Right. Okay. Mm. So now the agent starts to walk, and on this side you can see um, yeah, some red dots. This is where the lava is. This is minus 100. And now it tries to figure out the way and I have completely no idea what, what it has to do. So it's just walking and falling to lava, starting again, walking next time, um, doing, when it's no idea, doing some random moves between. And try to learn not to fall into lava, which happens here. So you can also see it has absolute no idea that when it falls from Upside into lava, that's the same field also from, from the right side. It just moves and gets some rewards for this. And now tries to figure out something. So we let it run. It's, yeah, it takes a little bit. But you can see it or nearly found the boundaries where the lava is. But still, yeah. Now it found the blue one. You can see there's a green dot and restarts again, tries some moves, moves around, figures out some different ways. It's always interesting to watch. I don't know how often I saw this, so. Where are we at? 27. So it's getting, it's finding the way now. So I have a seed value behind it. it uh, with the seed value, the scenario will be built up and also um, the random moves. 
otherwise I wouldn't know if it will ever find something and we will um, sit here to tomorrow maybe. So at the beginning it has some, some problems to find a way, but when it gets through between these two blocks, then it will, yeah, getting better and better. Okay. Now it has the way. This everything fine. I can stop this. And go on. Okay. So this is the result of, of this movement. Um, I don't know if you can see the green dots. I, as I told, I, I saw it so often, I, I already see the green dots automatically. And then I thought, okay, red, green, there's also some problems maybe some people have, and then decided to just get rid of everything and only the green dots. And maybe you can see also this one is not so bright as the up upside one, so yeah. So this is the path it will find. And how is this working? So this is done with queue learning. Um, yeah, I'm not a mathematician. I couldn't speak this word really well. Um, also not an artist, because every time I see this nicely formulas, the queue with the curve thing I'll, and arrows, it's like, wow, cool. So I'm a developer, a programmer. This makes more sense for me. This is some Python code from the learning itself. And as you can see, the new queue is this queue with the S, S stands for state, and A is the action it takes. So the new queue is the old queue plus an alpha. The alpha is the step size parameter, how fast it will work. I have later on an example with uh, different um, values. So in this case, I just used um, one, which makes it also a little bit simpler, the, the bracket inside. Then RT is the reward. Then we have a gamma for the discount rate parameter. So when the discount parameter is too high, it always takes the best move. A little bit lower, it will um, yeah, choose a different move also. The maximum Q is with the current state, the best move. So this is what we taken. And then we have also minus the old um, Q in this case. So I have an example now. Um, this is the case when it first time finds the blue field. So it moves from, from the brown field left to the um, blue field, right? I have a problem with left, right. Sorry, I always have to think. So here we have this formula with the same values, everything. And the old Q is from the previous state where it was. So it was um, on this field with the end of, of the arrow and moved to the left side. Is it left? Yes, it's left. Okay, it moved along the left side. So the old queue, that's a new move, doesn't happen before, so this is zero. Also, the new field where we are going, the blue one, we've never been there, so the maximum is also zero. The reward to move there is 99. So it, you get 100 for the blue field, minus one for the move will be 99. And then I just add in the values, and most of them we don't need because zero plus something and one more uh, uh, multiplied by something. So at the end, the new state Q for this is 99. Okay, one step before. So it, it learns this way, it stops, it starts again and comes to the state from moving up to this field. So I have only these two examples, don't worry, I don't get, get to the end of this. So here's the same formula again. And this time the old Q was minus one because it, at the last time it was minus, uh, this one move. The maximum Q for the new field is 99. 
So that's the, that's the best it can get here. The reward is just minus one for the move. And then, um, yeah, 0 0.8 ma uh, multiplied 99 will be 79.2. The rest of these values, and I can throw away some of them, and at the end, it's 78.2. And this is the way it works through this Q table, which is set up. So I just replaced the minus 101 with L for the lava part to make it easier. And then this is when it moves left, down, right, and up. So in this case, the 99 is moving to the left side, this is moving up, is 78, and then it goes through 61, 40, and so on. So in, at the end, you can see here the way through it, and the value also gets lower by this. And these are the values um, with uh, alpha 1.0 and gamma um, 0.8. And now I just change this to alpha 0 0.5 and gamma 1.0. With this 1.0 with gamma, you can see it's 99, 97. So the value itself doesn't get lowered so fast. And you can also see there's one um, line which moves through it. But this is after 40 moves, and it's still not ended. So you can see here, this, this one is still minus 1. And after 60 moves, it's nearly ended. And you can see, now it's one clear line. There was a 45 and 47 between. But it still doesn't move really, um, didn't find some, some extra um, path. So it's just straight through one path. And that's maybe also one, one of these problems. So it doesn't find a new path if it just hangs on a local minimum or maximum in this case. And the other thing is like, OK, we have now this scenario. We know what the blue one is. We know what, what the brown blocks is, what this lava means. But what about this scenario? Totally different one. So the blue block is something else, somewhere else. Lava is something inside of this. And how to figure out this? So, to find a way for this, I have to restart everything again. And as you saw, it takes some time. But therefore, there's deep reinforcement learning. So this is taking the pictures. Just show an image. Yeah, get into it. So deep reinforcement learning, we have our reinforcement learning and the supervised learning, the thing with the cats and dogs. And we take this smaller part out of this. So in this case, we are using images. And here's the game, um, an Atari game, which there's also paper available. And it's um, from DeepMind. They just um, yeah, set up lots of um, Atari games and played the game. And I just leave it. So the only information it has, uh, the points, it gets as a reward. There's some memory block inside of this game where the points are. And the movement for the paddle. It could move left, right, or idle. And here in this case, it's a little bit moving fast around. So after 600 moves, it learns that it could throw the ball behind the blocks and getting faster reward. OK, just here. But one thing is. Um, 
why they are using the, the images for this is like um, yeah, to know where the blocks are and also the movement of the ball. So at this um, picture, you don't know if the ball is moving up or down. So, and therefore, they take two pictures, one before, one now, and subtract this. And then they get the movement out of the, the ball. Wait, I already saw this, yeah. Um, and the same idea I took from, from this paper and just took two images always and subtract them. And this will look like this one. So this is the movement to the right side. Yeah. And therefore you can see, okay, there's, um, there was some lava before, now the lava moves away. I also need this um, when the agent is standing in front of a blue block and moves to the blue block, then he couldn't see that there was a blue block one line before. So therefore, with the subtraction, I get the information, okay, there's a blue block. And then I took lots of, of uh, scenarios out of this um, 100. Yeah, I just choose 100 because I thought maybe with the random stuff, there's not so many difference between it. And also set up uh, 12 classes. So I have a good move for, uh, yeah, for each direction, a bad move, and uh, the super move is like when it finds a blue block. And a bad move is when it falls into lava. So I got the, the movement with the pictures, and I know, okay, this wasn't a good idea, idea to walk into lava, so this will classify it as East Bad, for example. And here is um, the model itself in, in Keras. Um, it's based on the, the paper. And there are two convolutional um, layers inside of it. So um, 16, well, an 8 by 8, 16 of them with a stride of 4 of 4. It uses ReLU for, um, yeah, for the activation. ReLU itself, it's, um, with the minus value, it's, it's um, zero and then it, it's linear. Next layer has um, 32 of the 4 by 4 um, blocks with a stride of 2 by 2. Then everything is flattened to a 256 layer. And at the end, with the descents, the 12 here is the um, classes, so the actions it could take. Moving forward, backward, left, and right. Yeah, and then also compile, optimize our atom in this case. Okay. And now I have a demo for this. Okay, oh, Python. Oh, where are you? Here. <coughs> so I slowed down the, the, this so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, but it falls into lava. But one more. So at this time, it doesn't take, take the information of of the position or something from, from before. It's just using two images, combine them, and try to figure out the best way. And as you can see, it nearly finds the blue one, but then took the other way, and I don't know why it's falling into lava, because this shouldn't be a good move. One more time. So now it should move to the left side, but it doesn't work. So maybe there the data not not so correct or something. Um, the problem is it it only have out of all the scenarios only one one blue block one movement which finds the blue block out of many lava movements and normal movements, and maybe the data are not not so fine here, and. But I found one move 
which worked fine. So this different scenario, the blue block is on, yeah, on the right side. It moves up. And now it founds it. One more? Yeah, one more. So as I said, there is um, slowdown. I, I have put the sleep into it. OK. Ah, no, not good. One more. So I can show something. So it's the same again. But I will interrupt it now and make this bigger. So this is the thing I lock out of this. And um, move those, move those up good. Here we are, right. So this is, these are the 12 classes I have. So this one is East bad, um, East good, East super, and so on. I get um, a matrix out of this. And depending on the prediction, it delivers one or more um, values. In this case, it's left good, up is super, and right is bad. As you remember last position, it's nearly standing next to lava. So right isn't a good move. Left is a good move, but up was the blue block. And that's the reason it took this way at the end. I don't know why it doesn't take it in, in, in the previous example. Yeah, data, um, maybe also have to look in, into it with what kind of data they are uh, taking out of this. So, yeah, takeaways. Um, with um, the project Malmö, it's based on, on uh, Minecraft, so you don't need a license for, for, for uh, Minecraft. Um, just download this, the code, it reassembles everything, and then it, you can play around with it. So it has also some observation on, on the area itself. Uh, image recognition, uh, image could, you could see, um, move your agent around with an XML file, you define scenarios, can use Python and everything for it. Reinforcement learning itself, it's just like, yeah, trial and error thing. It's you, you compute on this, you find the best way, getting based on rewards, you get back some information and learn your agent or your system with this. And with deep reinforcement learning, you're taking another step into, um, yeah, with machine learning, in this case, image recognition. And, yeah. That's it. Um, and if you see me around, just say hi, Lars, so this is helping. <laughs> okay, thank you. We have time for questions, yeah. Here's someone? In the front, in the front. <laughs> ah, you, oh, I have to. No, wait, wait. Hello. I have to, okay, let's see. So yeah. in the first part of your talk, uh, you were talking about the reward function. And uh, I saw that you specified the 100 points and uh, minus 100 in case of loss and in case of uh, uh, getting the blue square. And my question is, um, what is the benefit of adding minus one per step uh, we make in uh, reaching the, the, the end of the solution? This is therefore, um, it's confusing <laughs> hearing myself. Um, yeah, this is useful, otherwise uh, the agent wouldn't move maybe. So, or move just m forward and backward. 
but it would be interesting if the, if the agent will learn this. Otherwise, um, if you don't put um, the minus one, uh, minus one into it, it just walks around. And at one point, it, there's a timeout for this. And then it doesn't learn something. So with each movement, you get a risk or something if you compare it this way. And therefore, um, yeah. Thank you. Questions? No more? Not a demo? <laughs> Who wants to see a demo again? One person, two person, three. Don't be shy. I just run it as long as it works. Faster, okay. I have to find a sleep. Uh, I was, no, it was wait. Here we are. So this is the sleep. I think I take out the line. I don't know if zero is working, maybe not. Okay. Something more? <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>